Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Buckle up, my friends. We have a lot to cover this week. So this one could be a long one. It's August 18th, 2022, New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. I'm Jim Hutchinson. And to be quite honest, I'm not exactly sure where to start this week's video forecast. We have the latest science and regulatory news out of DC. I'll save that one to the end. A nine and a half pound fluke in the surf coming right up or Wahoo fishing offshore in a 16 foot Starcraft aluminum boat. Well, I guess since I'm here at the tackle box in Hazlitt, Route 36 uh, in Monmouth County, we figured we might as well talk a little bit about the fluke action because in our reports this week at thefisherman.com, uh, well, I'll be honest with you, Phil and the crew here at the tackle box really do have their collective fingers on the pulse of what's going on in the fluke fishery on the Raritan Bay. We are getting some reports of some double digit doormat fluke now up on the Raritan Bay in bits and pieces. It has been kind of a weird season, but we have had some good reports of some jumbo fluke. Now I would point out that we are still dealing with that colder water temperature. Even though we've gotten off of a two week heat wave, we're dealing with this drought. The big headlines, for example, in NJ.com, in just the last few days, the headline said, why have New Jersey or Jersey Shore ocean water temps been shockingly cold? Well, again, it's that prevailing southwesterly winds, those offshore winds and the heavy south winds that we've had during this summer of 2022. It essentially pushes the warmer surface water out to sea and the colder bottom temperatures come up. And that's what we're experiencing here for the most part. I was just talking to a, a customer in the shop. We were talking about the fishing and he was asking about Spanish mackerel. And I haven't seen much in terms of reports of Spanish mackerel in the beach or along the beaches. And I think that has to do with that upwelling. Now, a lot of that upwelling this season has caused bottom temperatures to be even colder. So we've got cooler uh, surf waters and then even colder bottom temperatures. Again, that cooling water uh, along the beaches, I think, is what's been affecting the Bonita and, and Spanish mackerel in tight. But as far as the colder bottom temperatures, I also think that's what is hampering the fluke bite. We've talked about that for about a month. Divers I've talked to said there are fluke at the bottom. They see them on the wreck sites. They're just not snapping. Not yet. In fact, the YouTube subscriber Howard Rothweiler noted in last week's video forecast in the comments section how he marked 53 degree temperatures on the bottom in 60 feet of water. And he has had those registered for about a month now. So warm waters in the back bays and rivers, cooler waters along the ocean. It may, mean, it may leave you moving around a little bit to find that good bite. Or if it's too hot in one area, too cold in the middle. Uh, on the other end, you're going to have to find that Goldilocks position right in the middle. Now, as such, the most consistent bite in talking to a lot of folks at the Jersey Shore uh, south of here in the inlet waters, you know, Belmar, uh, Shark River, Manasquan, down Barnegat, all the way down into Cape May and Hereford and Corsons as well. That cooler water temperature coming in with the water temperatures so warm in the back, the inlets have been producing a little bit better bites. I think the real key is whether or not you're going a little bit farther west to find the water temperature, a little farther east to find it, find that spot in the middle. But like most of the charter and party boat fleet will tell you, you got to work a little bit harder. It's a matter of, uh, of drifting, of dropping, of analyzing, and then perhaps moving until you find where that bite is. And when you find that right bite, when you get on a patch of fish, make sure you do those drifts as quickly as possible. Now, regrettably, our midweek forecast from NOAA weather for, the, uh, for this weekend ahead shows another steady dose of southwesterly. So yeah, we're still dealing with that. So you're going to have to keep working it. Keep in mind the amount of bait that is in the back bays and the harbors and the canals and lagoons at this point. If you find that right water temperature might not be a spot where you typically fish. But if you figure out those baits uh, and a lot of peanut bunker, you might start seeing the first of the finger mullet in the back at some point very soon. But you can imagine that some of those fish are going to be in the back feeding outside of those harbors. Again, prepare to work for those fluke limits this weekend. Here at the Jersey Shore for the uh, 2022 season, we're dealing with that slot limit. One at 18 and above, one at 17.99, or two at 17 to 17.99 inches. So if you're up here in the Raritan, if you're stocking up on the stuff that you need for the fluke grounds and rare and you're stopping in a tackle box remember the limits you're under are where you're ported and where you're fishing 
So if you're heading out of here on the Raritan Bay shore and you're going out into New York waters, when you're in New York waters, you have to abide by their limits. And then whatever you bring back to port, you're gonna have to abide by the limits you've got here. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Some fluke reported, as a matter of fact, up on Robbins Reef in New York waters, where Owen Davis, Mikey Grassy, they used white glow gulp on rigs with a little bit of peanut bunker on some of those rigs as well. Thrown onto the hook for good measure, 22 and a half and 18 and a half inch fluke over the weekend. Again, good for New York, and if you're coming back into New Jersey, there's your one fish bag. Out at Keensburg Pier, six-year-old Elizabeth Ildefonso caught her first keeper this week, a 20-incher on minnow. Competitive young lady reeler here, I know that, trying to outfish brother Pedro, and I'm sure we're gonna hear a lot from this young angler in the future. Way to go, L, good fish. Some boats heading out to the sticky stuff off of Monmouth County are doing well. Some boats are heading out to Sandy Hook and going south. Hitting the rattlesnake, Shrewsbury Rocks. There is your spot burn for the week, but that sticky stuff will cost you some rigs. We are finding some fish out there as well. As a matter of fact, Colleen Shea, Hit this impressive eight and a half pound fluke at the rocks using a jig tipped with fresh peanut bunker. As noted, there are a lot of baits stacked out uh, or stacking up in the back right now. So peanut bunker, that then becomes a primo bait for fishing for fluke. In fact, if you're fishing in the surf, come in and check with Phil and the crew here. One of the, the things that the guys at, at Sandy Hook have been doing really well, instead of throwing jigs in the surf, they're fishing live bait under a bobber with just the right depth getting those fish around the tip of Sandy Hook. Now, heading out of Belmar earlier this week, Kirk Robinson had a good day. That was actually on Saturday. He was fishing on the FOL with Captain Parker John, pulled in this 26-inch fluke with a six, using a six-ounce jig and squid combo. As we continue to head north to south at the Jersey Shore, I heard from Dave Weber this week that he was fishing with his daughter Hannah and her husband Garrett. They were off Maniloking Beach. That was Monday. Hannah scored a 27 inch, eight pound personal best fluke on a red teaser and a four inch white gulp. That was on the outgoing tide. So I tend to think then maybe incoming tide if you're fishing in the inlets or back bays where that cooler water temperature comes in, but who knows, maybe on the outgoing tide, some of that warmer surface, uh, uh, some of that warmer water uh, is starting to mix in a little bit. So you might wanna switch around the tides. If you're doing a couple of drifts at the top of the tide or you're starting your day at the bottom, you might find better in those same conditions where you don't have good luck at one stage of the tide, those fish are turning on at the other. Meanwhile, I saw where the folks at Creekside Outfitters in Waretown have had a few good weigh-ins of late. Uh, this week, Carl Recchi had checked in with an 8.44 pound fluke. He was using a five inch pink shine grub. One other note in that area of Barnegat Bay, my buddy, Captain Joe Rizzo of Barnegat Bay Fishing Charters, we spoke last week and he said there's a surprising number of weak fish in that section or that area of Barnegat Bay. He said one thing that he's noticed, he's seen a lot of birds working up over top of the water, but there's nothing hitting the surface. Could be a good indication that you've got some the, uh, the, some of those weak fish underneath. If they're not the blues, if they're not the striper smacking at the top, they could be weak fish down underneath. Those birds are always a good sign of a place to stop and throw a couple of casts. As we stick north of the Causeway Bridge, I must say that one of the most impressive fluke catches of this 2022 season is one out of Grumpy's in Seaside. You know how Island Beach State Park has that two fish at 16 inch size limit ostensibly to give people a better opportunity to score. Well, this catch blows those away. On Tuesday, Mike Wujak brought in this 27 and a half inch throw rug into Grumpy's. It weighed a hefty 9.55 pounds on Grump scale there, where it was called this, quote, the biggest surf fluke ever to be weighed in here. No doubt, an incredible fish, nine and a half pounds, is a trophy no matter if you're on a boat or by beach, but it's especially different if you're on the beach. Nine and a half pounds from the surf, and yeah, that was another gulp fish. Now, maybe Mike doesn't have a boat, maybe he could be in contention a boat. Contention for a boat. I have to remind you about the Fisherman Magazine's Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. It's a members only contest. It goes on throughout the year, all the way through November. You're three editions competing against each other. You've got our New England edition, our Long Island Metro New York edition, and here our subscribers in the New, York, New Jersey, Delaware Bay region. We're all competing in multiple categories 
not I of course, but you as a subscriber, multiple categories to win at the end of the season a Steiger 23 Miami powered by a Yamaha outboard. Now as of this past weekend, I'm so happy to see that Dean Payalella, a New Jersey Delaware Bay Edition subscriber, is still at the top of the leaderboard for that season long contest to win that Steiger. It appears with Blackfish and Bluefish just about being wide open. Blackfish is wide open. Bluefish is mostly open. I know Dean's got to be gunning for that fluke because he's not on the board with a fluke yet. Maybe the suggestion is get those kayaks out here on the doormat grounds of the Raritan. But we're wishing you luck, Dean, in your quest for points on the way to a brand new dream boat. I mentioned Tog, uh, Blackfish, of course we have that one fish bag limit at the Jersey Shore through the summer months. It started on August 1st. One fish, 15 inches. So maybe if you're heading out with some greenies along the rocks, along the jetties, uh, that would be a good idea. I actually went down to Allen's Dock on Saturday, picked up a dozen greenies because I was anchored up using the trolling motor, the Minn Kota, looking for some short Tog. Well, that's what I found. I didn't find any keeper talk and maybe a sheep's head or two as well. So for those of you from Tuckerton, really actually from Barnegat Inlet South, that's where you're going to get more of a mix of tog and sheep's head. I do know some sheep's head along the Barnegat Inlet rocks. I wouldn't be surprised to find them in the Manasquan. But if you're anchored up or fishing for the jetties or any of the riprap, the bridge structure, the piers and bulkheads, all the way down into Cape May and across to Delaware, you have a good shot at tog or a sheep's head if you're dropping those crabs, whether it's the green crabs you pick up someplace like here at the tackle box, or if you're picking up some fiddler crabs along the back base. We're also getting a pretty solid fluke report, uh, summer flounder in the ICW area behind Margate. The folks at Ray Scott's dock said, quote, the flounder population is booming. And again, they're getting solid reports on those flatties along the ICW. Again, for a lot of the state, and especially with the weird water temperatures we have here, a lot of people are looking for those fluke in the back bay where there's a lot of smaller fish. So again, that two fish slot, that's 17 to 17.99, it has been pretty impressive. Uh, the reports that I'm getting some, so from a lot of folks who say they just love it this season. Uh, one of the most intriguing weigh-ins of late comes by way of Absecon Bay Sportsman Center on the mainland side, west of Atlantic City, right? Paul Gantz of Mullet Outdoor Adventures turned a few heads over the weekend when he came up, showed up at Dave's place with a wahoo to weigh in, 51.65 pounds. He caught that on a Sea Witch Ballyhoo combo. But more impressive was this. Paul said it was caught at the location of a removed buoy two miles northwest of the San Jose, 78 feet, feet of water, and it was caught on his trusty 1967 16-foot StarCraft aluminum skiff. No kidding. Quote, I flew the tuna flag since I don't carry a Wahoo one, Paul said this week. A freaking daredevil catch, if I might add. Congratulations. For some Wahoo tactics, whether you're fishing from a 16-foot aluminum, aluminum boat or a 46-foot Viking billfish, Wahoo tactics are in the August edition of the Fisherman magazine. Pick that copy up. It's got sheep's head in the, on the cover. And inside, you'll find Captain Darren Doris's article on fishing for those speedsters. It's a great article. He's completely hooked on Wahoo fishing. You'll find out why when you read this article. You can also check our YouTube page for the latest Nomad uh, video Featuring Darren, he goes through some of the uh, the Nomad lures to use, the Mad Max, for example, the DTX, and tells you how to get on those Wahoo. Yeah, they're offshore at the Jersey Shore this summer. And it's all about being in the right place and putting the right thing down at the right speed. For those of you thinking about an offshore canyon trip in the days ahead, from the Hudson to Baltimore, I would not recommend a smaller 16-foot aluminum StarCraft boat. Keep an eye on things because on Saturday and Sunday, in terms of the NOAA offshore weather forecast, it looks like it could be a big boat measure for you. You know, I talked about those rays along the inshore grounds of late. I had two myself on two separate trips uh, to the beach last week, jigging for flounder, uh, summer flounder. Uh, on 15 minutes in, I was tangling with rays. But the one thing that we were talking about is what's swimming amidst those rays, right? Uh, well, here's one reminder from Captain John Gibbons last week. They'd hooked a ray, I guess while tuna jigging, got home and watched their GoPro video that they put down while they were trying to un unhook this ray. 
lo and behold, you, hold, you can see the yellowfin swimming right under those rays. You never know what's going on down there. I think that's the greatest thing about dropping a line in salt water because you never know what you're going to tangle with. We'll take a look at a few more of the coastal catches, discuss my old buddy, Dr. Jane Lubchenco, in just about 70 seconds. But first, let's head out to the Poconos for a report with my man, George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, last week we talked about the temperatures dropping here and the fishing is really starting to pick up because of that temperature drop. I'm hearing reports of water temperatures in the high 70s, even at Beltsville, a lake that's traditionally, oh, in the mid, mid 80s uh, this time of year. So things are starting to look up. But hopefully this weather continues. We do need a bit of rain, though, guys. The rivers are running really low and it's making it very difficult for those to get into some fish in some of the rivers. Now, uh, over in Beltsville, uh, traditionally a hard lake to fish in the summertime anyway, Matt Mitchell and his pop Ron were both out uh, fishing for some smallmouth and being both pretty successful, getting into a couple of really nice trophies to take home on, on, a, on a hot summer's day. Now, over here in the Delaware, I checked in with my good friend Tim Keebler. He had Mike, aka Sharky, out on a trip getting into some nice smallmouth as well. So the Rivers are producing really good smallmouth. I'm hearing the same reports over in the Susquehanna. So lots of good fishing. I hope this weather's going to turn around and really kick things off, guys. So stay with it. Can you believe it? Only two weeks away from Labor Day weekend and the, the tourists go away and the fishermen can take over the lakes again real soon. So hopefully you guys can get out on them. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. You know, George brings up uh, a good point about our summer visitors, uh, those folks who descend upon the, uh, uh, the shore, the lakes, the streams, the bays, uh, out in the Poconos, down here at the Jersey Shore to get away from the summer heat. Well, the other summer visitors, of course, will stick around after our regular summer visitors head back to their daily lives. And that, of course, are some of those exotics. Triggerfish, for example, can be found on a lot of the jetty rocks uh, all up and down the Jersey coast. Primarily, it's more of something you'll find central into South Jersey. Figure Ocean, Atlantic, and Cape May County, those trigger fish will swim up along the jetty rocks. You'll also find them at the reef sites. But I'll tell you what, I know Captain Ralph Lair of The Last Lady out of Shark River. He's there in Neptune. He's been running a bunch of trigger fish uh, trips, and he's been doing pretty well from what I can understand when the conditions allow. Boats out of Lewis Harbor, uh, of course, in Delaware, like the Pirate King, they're putting together a whole potpourri of catches, something you'll find uh, throughout the state of New Jersey as well. But I'll tell you what, the Pirate King is catching weekies, blues, flounder, croaker, and spot those Cape May goodies I talked about. That's a heck of a fish fry right there. There's also, of course, mahi around the pots. We've seen that happen in the last few weeks. A lot of folks are running uh, and gunning, trying to throw some baits and throw some bucktails and various lures along the fish pots. The folks at Sea Isle Bait and Tackle reported last week where Captain Joe Hughes found a red hot bite on the dolphin fish, purportedly from trolling small ballyhoo around the fish pots. You can also throw some live bait at those pot flags, such as minnows, peanut bunker, maybe even a live spot. You'll get a jumbo mahi on that one. It's good to have a live well filled with goodies, though. Uh, perhaps those spot, perhaps those peanut bunker, uh, when you're heading out along the inshore and the offshore grounds. You're never knowing what you're going to find. Uh, there's, a, there's been a, a bunch of cobia reported in our region. Uh, but it's not one of those things where a lot of people target the cobia. It's usually a bycatch, but I do know some folks who will target the, co uh, the, the cobia, usually by hitting the sea, buoy, the sea buoy first in the morning, but also having a, a livey ready rigged and ready to throw in case you see some of those surface cruising torpedoes, those big dark cobia. A big fish, a tasty fish, and I wish you luck in finding them. Now for you tournament, tournament anglers, you have the Jersey Coast Shark Anglers and First Annual Tuna Tournament to support wounded vets. That's this weekend. It's Saturday and Sunday. Um, the captain's meeting is going to be held at Club Head Headquarters on Herbertsville Road in Brick. You can find out all the details by going to jcsa.org. But again, that's a two-day tuna tournament this Saturday and Sunday, Captain's Choice. You also have the 23rd Annual Greater Saltwater Open Fluke Tournament to benefit the New Jersey chapter of Heroes on the Water. That's going to be held this Saturday. The captain's meeting is Thursday. Thursday, August 18th, 7 p.m. That's at the Ozark Sportsman Club, which is on Tom's River Road in Jackson, or you can also go over to their second captain's meeting location. That's on the deck at Atlantic Highlands. Again, that's Thursday. If you want details on that fluke tournament this weekend, call Rob 
at 609-516-4096. Now also on the deck, that's the bar there that's at Atlantic Highlands Marina. This Friday, Eyes on First Avenue is Costa Customer Appreciation Party. We talked about this with the folks at Eyes on First a few weeks back, but this Friday night from 6, uh, from 6 p.m. until 10 p.m., Costa Appreciation, uh, half price drinks, it's free to enter. Uh, uh, there's no admission charge, but should be a pretty good time. Food discounts as well. Again, that's on the deck in Atlantic Highlands. On the news front, Another round of reef balls were deployed outside of Beach Haven on Little Leg Reef site this week. The Beach Haven Charter Fishermen's Association has been hot and heavy on putting more materials at Little A. You got to thank the junior mates of the Beach Haven Charter Fishing Association for getting that done. I hope to have some numbers, some GPS, Latin lawn for you for some of those reef balls in the coming weeks and you'll especially find it at the Fisherman Magazine. Out of Manasquan Inlet, you of course have not uh, missed out on seeing this, that the Manasquan Inlet is filling in. Most of the time people are fishing in Manasquan Inlet by walking along the jacks, which is really dangerous, but now sand has filled in the inlet. This photo, courtesy of Captain Alan Gonzalez, shows you, no doubt, what upwelling can do to the Army Corps fail right? All that sugar sand that was put on the beaches of Bayhead and Point Pleasant is now sitting in Man Manasquan Inlet. Well, I do have an update. Congressman Chris Smith announced this week that the Army Corps will be paying a visit to the inlet to see what can be done before navigation in and out of this critical waterway becomes highly treacherous. Speaking of treacherous and treachery, I love this headline from the Washington Post this week. White House climate official sanctioned by prestigious science body. It would seem that the Imperial Grand Poobah of the Marine Sanctuary Front, the one who ushered in the Hudson Canyon Marine Sanctuary proposal, Dr. Jane Lubchenco, is once again in hot water to environmental, due to environmental hucterism. Read about why in the July edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Pick up that copy, you still have that. It's got a tuna on the cover of Jimmy Leone, but you can also find it by going to thefisherman.com, going to the New Jersey Magazine, as, uh, section and go to that July edition, but I wrote about this in a July edition editor's log that was called, quote, one step forward, two steps back. Well, this month, the one month after I wrote about this, Dr. Jane Lubchenco has gotten her knuckles wrapped by her scientific peers. As all eyes are on this Hudson Canyon Marine Sanctuary plan, the woman who is pretty much responsible for helping usher this through uh, has been charged with violating scientific integrity. I love this. We're going to have to wait to see how the White House reacts to news that their science integrity officer has been wrapped for not having scientific integrity. You will find that piece, like I said, by going to thefisherman.com. I gotta tell you, my editor's logs, they're fun to write, but I don't make any friends in the bureaucracy at the federal or state side, do I? Well, that doesn't matter because I find there's nothing quite as rewarding with picking a fight with a bureaucratic ideologue. Well, that's not true. I could say I would find a lot more fun on a vacation in Costa Rica, but it's hot enough here but the action out there is pretty warm. Let's leave you this week with an update from my friend, Captain Ben Gilmore, out in Costa Rica with our Costa Rica report from Capos. And until then, until next week, catch him up. And I will see you again next week, right here at thefisherman.com. Hey there, guys, and welcome to the Marina Pez Vela here in Costa Rica. Right now, we got a great blue marlin bite going on. Just in the last week, there's been some incredible blue marlin fishing right here about 30 to 40 miles offshore some of the boats getting into two three four marlin per day when they can find the fish just insane fishing we've had a really good sailfish bite from time to time sometimes bites keep popping up and the guys are getting on some good numbers of sailfish too yellowfin tuna bite has been wide open on some days as well as mahi mahi closer to shore around about 10 to 15 miles out and some really nice wahoo fishing over the offshore humps. We'd love to see you guys down here very soon. Our peak season is November through April. Get booking those tickets, guys, and hope to see you in Costa Rica. Back over to you.